Hey everybody, welcome to the Don't Stop Deploying Challenge. I'm Chris Chant with Salesforce Developers. We are super excited about Salesforce DX and wanted to give you, the community, a chance to get involved and learn more. Joining the challenge is simple. Each day, we'll ask you to complete one of the units within the app development with Salesforce DX Trailhead module. We'll be posting a video every day this week with a quick intro to the unit you'll be completing and an interview with some very special guests. You'll hear from customers, the product team, and more about why they love Salesforce DX. After you complete the unit for each day, make sure to tweet what you learned using the hashtag don't stop deploying. At the end of the week, you'll post a screenshot on Twitter of you earning the badge. You can use the Woohoo page, the Trailhead profile page, or basically any image showing that you completed the module. We'll ask you to fill out a form with your information and you'll earn the swag pack. If you've already completed the module, don't worry. We will accept screenshots of any of the other modules on the Get Started with Salesforce DX trail. For complete details, make sure to check out don'tstopdeploying.com. Awesome. So in today's challenge, we're going to complete the first unit, Set Up Salesforce DX. We're going to learn all about dev hubs, scratch orgs, and we'll install the Salesforce DX command line interface. To, to kick us off, we are going to speak with Dave Carroll, a cornerstone of the Salesforce developers community, and now product manager working on the Salesforce DX CLI. I hope you enjoy. Hey everybody, we are joined today by Dave Carroll, a former evangelist here over at Salesforce who now works on the product side with Salesforce DX. Thanks for joining us, Dave. You bet, Chris. It's a pleasure. Hey, so we've got a couple questions for you. As you know, we're doing this Don't Stop Deploying Challenge, and the, the focus is to uh, get our developers to be working with Salesforce DX. And we're hoping we talk a little about kind of some of the motivating, motivating factors behind building Salesforce DX and some of the other cool stuff you, you enjoy about the new, the new feature. Is that something cool we can talk about? Yeah, sure. So uh, Salesforce DX is an initiative here at Salesforce that allows us to bring our development process more in line with what the developer expects. Uh, certainly Salesforce is a unique platform, um, has some unique challenges, but that doesn't mean that we can't give developers the tools that they're used to uh, for developing and deploying applications on the platform. And so that's the major uh, impetus behind Salesforce DX today. Uh, we're kind of at the beginning of the DX road, and so the first thing we wanted to tackle was the ability to both collaborate and to allow developers to bring standard software development practices to the development process here on the platform, primarily centered around uh, CI, continuous integration, and CD continuous delivery. Awesome, awesome. Uh, who's Salesforce DX built for? Well, CS, uh, Salesforce DX is um, initially targeted at uh, professional developers or coders, um, is another way of saying it. Uh, people who are both responsible for the coding and the deployment of the code. Now, historically, right, there's a big overlap between admins and developers. Um, and so our first uh, initial push to really kind of uh, verify uh, the approach has been to focus on developers and primarily looking at the ISV use case. But DX is not limited just to developers. Uh, we've got a lot of work that we're doing so that admins can also enjoy the benefits of source code control, change tracking, and uh, the other aspects of Salesforce DX. Cool. That sounds super exciting. Yeah. Uh, how do you think Salesforce DX is going to improve development on the Salesforce platform? Well, it's going to improve it in a couple of different ways. I mean, just the ability to uh, look at or, or keep track of your source code. These are all the changes that you make inside an org, whether it's coding changes or setup configuration changes. Just being able to keep track of that in a source code repository gives you a whole level of governance that you otherwise wouldn't have. And this is going to make, uh, make your investment um, more reliable, uh, your, the applications and solutions that you build more reliable. Um, and the other thing that it's going to do is allow teams to collaborate. Uh, because we're using a source code centric uh, approach with DX, this is much more typical than the, uh, or, or, or matches up better with a traditional software approach for developing. Cool. So what do you think the biggest problem Salesforce DX solves for our customers? Well, you know, I've mentioned CI and, and, and CD a lot. Um, it's been very difficult, I think, for uh, customers 
to be able to apply these best practices, to run all their tests, to make sure that changes are merged correctly, uh, to be able to move from one environment to another environment and have those environments match before rolling it out into production. That's the primary use case that we're solving here with DX, is to make sure that uh, you can keep track of the changes that you make and that you can get them out into production reliably. Awesome, awesome. Uh, how do you hope that teams are going to use Salesforce DX to collaborate when building, uh, when building together, I should say? Well, what, what we're hoping that we're accomplishing, I mean, this has been a, a philosophical goal of DX from day one, is that developers can bring the tools that they're already using and uh, apply some of the features and functionality that DX provides within those tools and processes. So if you've already got software um, procedures set up inside your IT shop, for instance, or at, uh, as an ISV, you would be able to use your Jenkins, your GitHub, your Bitbucket, whatever, whatever it is you're using. And because DX is kind of uh, built around this concept of a scriptable CLI, um, developers should then be able to do the collaboration like they are familiar with doing collaboration using other software stacks. Cool. Since you uh, joined the product team over there at Salesforce DX, I have to ask, uh, have you got any wish list items for the Salesforce DX roadmap that you're kind of hoping to get out there? Yeah, uh, well, there's, there's some things that uh, we're, we're looking at, including, uh, we'll talk more about these at Dreamforce, of course, but um, one of the things that I'm excited about being the product owner for the CLI is making the CLI um, a tool that you can customize. And the way that we're doing that or we're thinking about doing that is by formalizing a plugin architecture so that as a plugin developer, you can go ahead and leverage some of the underlying functionality of the CLI so that you don't have to rewrite the wheel, uh, so that you can include your own customized processes, any steps in the build that uh, might be specific to uh, your particular business can be included directly within the CLI. That makes it repeatable, reliable, and so on. Uh, we're also putting a lot of effort into figuring out what it means for admins uh, to participate in DX. And so we'll be talking more about that as, uh, as Dreamforce approaches. Cool. Thanks. Does that mean you and I can collaborate on a cat video plugin for CLI? Maybe embed some cat videos and do my Salesforce instance? I don't see why we couldn't do that. <laughs> awesome. Hey, Dave, it's been great chatting with you. Thank you so much for taking some time to talk with us today. Hey, thanks a lot. I really enjoyed it. Cheers, man. Hey, guys. Thanks so much for joining us for the Don't Stop Deploying Challenge today. If you have any questions on the challenge or today's module, be sure to check out don'tstopdeploying.com or tweet your questions with hashtag AskForce and hashtag Don't Stop Deploying to Twitter. We'll see you tomorrow for our next challenge. Thanks again.